Hello, everyone. Hi, good evening. Hey, good evening. How are you? Hello. Tonight? Hello, good evening. Good How evening. are you tonight? Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Juan Alberto, Sandra Guadalupe, Sandra Margarita, Kevin Adrián, Judy, welcome. Who else we have? Navy, welcome. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. <laughs> we have Rafael, mm -hmm. Alba Marisol. We have Aaron that is connected right now. Kenya Vanessa. Blanca is connecting too. Welcome. Who else we have? Yes, right. Welcome everyone, guys. How do you feel today? This Tuesday? Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Ready to continue? Yes. 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 To continue practicing. Welcome then to your new session. Yesterday, remember that we were with the use of some and any. And we saw also that some is for affirmative, also to formulate questions. And any is for questions, but also you can make negative manners. And we saw some exercises. Good night, teacher. Hey, good evening. Welcome. So we have here, we're going to continue with another objective. It says, by the end of this class, you will learn about common brave foods, right? Brave fast food in different countries. Additionally, you will practice a conversation which illustrates some cultural differences in food. So we know there are different type of food depending on the country, depending on the culture that we also have. For example, this type of food, you see we have uh, like a corn tamales, we have fried rice, that in the case that they are fried plantains, we also have rice, beans, we have pupusas. Which country pupusas. represents this one? They are that they look very delicious. So which country represents this type of food? From which country they are? This type of food? El Salvador. El Salvador, right. That's good. Yes. So we have the famous pupusas. Do you like pupusas? Everybody, right? Yes. Everybody like loves pupusas. pupusas. Yes. What kind of pupusas are your favorite one? Judy, what are your favorite pupusas? Hello. The audio. Hola, hola. Yes. Hola. We can hear you. Eh, yes. Las revueltas. No sé cómo oh, se yes. dice. Mixed. Mixed pupusas. Yes, they are delicious. It's a mix of everything, right? What about you, Rebecca? Rebecca, Vanessa? What are your favorite pupusas? Cheese and beans. Cheese and beans, they are cool. Yes, Aaron, what about you? Eh, revueltas. Mix pupusas too, yeah? That they Mix pupusas, sí. nice. They have all the ingredients too, good. What about you, Evelyn? Now tell us about your favorite food. Pupusas crazy. The, yeah, that's true. The pupusas locas, right? And they are big. <laughs> they look like pizza. <laughs> it's a big size, yes. Evelyn, what is your favorite food from El Salvador? My favorite food from El Salvador is, um, I think, pupusas. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, they are good. David, what about you? My favorite, favorite my favorite food in um, Salvador is pupusas and the chicken, the chicken and chick, queso. Oh, yeah, cheese. cheese. And kiss. Ah, okay. The so pollo con queso. Cheese. Ah, that's good. Chicken with cheese. Chicken yeah. with cheese. With cheese. With cheese. Yes, they are good. So they mix them. They have a good flavor then. So as we know, we also have in El Salvador other typical food, like tamales. We have tamales. What else do we have? We have yuca. What else? Nuegados. Ajá, pastelitos, enchiladas. Enchiladas. Ajá. with honey. Ajá, empanadas. So we have a lot of torrejas. 
Torrejas are good too, yes. Yes, with chilate, right? They are very delicious. Chuco. Chuco. It's chuco is delicious. With chili. Very yes. delicious. Yeah, especially with alguaste, right? Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Es increíble, pero en, en, en el chuco y en el mango sí pasa el alguaje, pero really? nada más. Ok. It's the mix of ingredients, right? The problem is the mix with ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> ok, we are going to watch a video. And this one is about, uh, we have a conversation too, about fish for breakfast. Let's see. Who eats break, right? This fish for breakfast. We are going to watch that. Yes, Japan and Mexico eat for breakfast. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn about common breakfast foods in different countries. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates some cultural differences in food. Let's get started by learning what people in the U.S., Japan, and Mexico eat for breakfast. What do you have for breakfast? The U.S. Eggs Bacon Toast with butter Orange juice Coffee Jam. Jelly. Japan. Fish. Rice. Soup. Pickles. Green tea. Mexico. Eggs. Beans. Tortillas. Fresh fruit. Sweet bread. Coffee with milk. So what do you have for breakfast? Next, what I would like for you to do is to listen to a conversation which illustrates this topic. Let's listen and practice. Fish for breakfast? Let's have breakfast together on Sunday. Okay, come to my house. My family always has a Japanese-style breakfast on Sundays. Really? What do you have? We usually have fish, rice, and soup. Fish for breakfast? That's interesting. Sometimes we have a salad, too, and we always have green tea. Well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like to try new things. Now it's your turn to practice this conversation along with the vocabulary. You may watch this video as many times as necessary. I will also like for you to answer the following question in our discussion forums. What do you have for breakfast? Okay, so we saw the conversation there, right? But these are about different type of food. What do you have for breakfast? What do you have is like, what do you eat? So have can substitute the verb eat or drink if you are talking about liquids. In the U.S., we have eggs, bacon, toast with butter, orange juice, coffee, jam, or jelly. Do you have new vocabulary here? Jam. Jam. Jam is this one. Come on. This one. Right? So you can have this one. Jam. Uh, With no the J. I'm sorry? Jalea. No importa el sabor. Ah, exactly. Uh -huh. Because you can say like the specific fruit. For example, here you have a strawberry jam. Grape jam. Pineapple jam. So it can be different flavor. Okay. Do you like jam? Everybody likes jam? Mango. Mango. Ah, you prefer that one. You can put like in bread, right? In the toast, you put them. There are some people that they put them in waffles, in the pancakes also, and they can make a... Ah, uh -huh. so they include that. To the cookies, some people, they add jam to the cookies and they have in different flavors. 
Let's see the next list. Now in Japan, fish, imagine for breakfast, fish, rice, soup, pickles, green tea. New vocabulary? Pickles. Pickles. Uh, do you know what are cucumbers? What are cucumbers? Cucumbers you put in salad. Pepinos. Pepinos. Ajá. And pickles Pepinos. are the babies. Ajá, exactly. Pepinos. Pickles are the baby cucumbers. Ajá. Pero en ese caso, Miss, no importa cómo estén, porque comúnmente los pepinillos siempre están como curtidos. Ajá, but in general. Porque a veces no que los que venden en el mercado, pero son pepinillos, son los más pequeños. Or the ones that are in the supermarket, aunque estén curtidos, that you mentioned. Okay. They, they have in a jar or in a deposit, they are pickles. They are pickles. Teacher. Tell me. How do you say uh, huevos rancheros? They were like a ranch, ranch eggs, or also can be a spart eggs. Like this. A spart eggs. Porque son huevos estrellados. So they are start eggs. But if you talk about... Salsita? Sí, eso es lo que lleva como, como yeah. tomatada. ¿eh? Ajá. In that one, then you can say, because it's a proper name, como es un, un nombre propio, tendría que ser huevos rancheros. Porque ya ranch, es un nombre ranch propio. Eggs. Or you can say ranch eggs. Ranch eggs or huevos rancheros. Porque es algo propio. <coughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like a proper name. It's, for example, in El Salvador, you cannot translate pupusas. There is no translation. Tamales, there's no translation. Cuando es algo propio Miss, de un país, ya no lo traducimos. Hello. Miss, en el caso, cuando se estaba preguntando, yo tenía mm -hmm. pensado decir marcada, pero no sé Mariscada. si realmente ajá, de ah. nosotros o se puede What happened is that, lo que pasa es que ese como no es propio, sino que también, ajá, se puede internacionalizar. You can say like a Seafood, seafood soup. Porque es sopa de mariscos. Es Pero no seafood veo. soup. Tengo los cuadritos. Eh... You don't see it? Ah, okay. You can see it. Seafood soup. Porque es sopa de mariscos. Seafood, mariscos. Exactly. So it's a mix, right? If you have shrimp, if you have fish, crab, lobster. So it's a mix. So it's seafood soup in general. But here in El Salvador, we call it like mariscada. We know that it's a soup of seafood, of all of this type of, of seafood. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo que dijimos ayer que era sopa de pata, teacher? That is pata soup. Or pata, pata. de soup. Uh -huh, correct. Pata soup. O pata touch. <laughs> <laughs> or sopa de pata, porque es algo propio también de nuestro país. Okay. Uh -huh. Also in Guatemala, right? Or in Honduras, people drink that. In Belize, also, they drink this type of soup. We have also the case of Mexico. We know that in Mexico is also, right, other similar ones. Let's check here. We have in Mexico eggs, beans, tortillas. Not tortillas, it's tortillas. It's another proper name. This is otro nombre propio. No tortillas. Ajá, you say tortillas. Tortillas. Fresh fruit, sweet bread, fresh sweet bread, right? Everybody here in El Salvador too, with coffee normally. Coffee. Son las mismas, tos son las mismas tostadas, no. Sweet bread, no, es el pan dulce, like semita, eh, if you have pastelitos. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oleadas, <coughs> right? Es el pan dulce en general. That's the sweet bread. So in Mexico, it's very similar than the U.S., look, because uh -huh. they have eggs, they have also, well, bacon. What is bacon? Um, tocino. Tocino. Uh -huh. Jamón, that will be like this, with H. Ham. Like this. And that's jamón. Ah, yo me había confundido esa cuando preguntó la de abajo, porque pensé because que era... Because it's similar. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ya, mi entonces... They are very similar nouns. Miss? Yes, tell me. Huevos con tocino, A and... Eggs? You can say eggs with bacon. Eggs and bacon. Eggs, eggs and bacon. 
and bacon or eggs, eggs with bacon. Eggs. ¿Cómo? Eggs with bacon or eggs and bacon. Eggs with huevos con, con tocino Chips. or huevos y tocino. Okay. They are two, two ingredients together. With bacon. The two manners, it will be okay to us. So if you say, I eat eggs and bacon for breakfast, or I eat eggs with bacon, and or with. Teacher, entonces, en el caso de las comidas, cuando son, por ejemplo, comidas típicas, se van a mantener los nombres re, tal cual como están It's, en cualquier parte uh -huh. del mundo. Is the proper nouns, correct? Son nombres propios, a menos que sean internacionalizados, ¿verdad? For example, the soup no es solo propia de nosotros. You have soup in all the countries. Por uh -huh. eso me, me llena la duda, como el día de ayer ustedes comentaban sopa de pata. ¿Por qué se traduce, Miss? In that case, because soup, soup es el nombre en general. Sopa. Ajá. Pero si estamos hablando de un nombre propio y comúnmente sopa de pata solamente es de El Salvador, ¿por they qué are... no se... No se dice sopa de patas. You can say two manners because you can also say that in Guatemala, in Honduras, they drink that soup. So you can say pata soup or in general manner, sopa de patas. The two forms are correct to use them. Thank you, Miss. The soup, also the chicken soup is general. Chicken soup is different manner, right? Also to express it. Bean soup, pues no, no solo nuestra, sino también puede ser en otros países, right? Like even in the United States, they make this. It's not very common that they make it, but they also have it. Different types. Also a uh, beef soup. What soup is that? Beef soup. What kind of soup is this? Sopa de res. The rest, mm -hmm, correct. No es solo nuestra. You have it in other countries too. En este about... caso, sopa mm -hmm. de gallina india. Ah, that will be hen soup. Hen soup. Different than chicken, right? <laughs> it has a different flavor. Incluso el sabor uh -huh. es diferente, right? So you have chicken soup. Sí, por soup. eso pregunto, uh -huh. porque había... Un día esto vi un top como de las mejores sopas del mundo mm -hmm. y eso se mm -hmm. colocaba en un lugar, creo. Oh, yes. Pero no sé si estaba como de, así es el nombre propio, sopa de gallina india. O sea, gallina india o uh -huh. gallina say. tiene otro significado. You can say also, because we have different types of hen, right? You can also say Indian. It's more specific. Eso es como para hacerlo más específico. Indian hen soup. Indian sería el adjetivo. Hen, gallina. Sopa de gallina india. So it's Indian hand soup. Or only hand soup. Vaya, so mis, pero en el, vaya, en, el, en el caso, mis, comúnmente en México no le llaman sopa, sino que es un caldo. Ah, this one you call like this. Eh, for example, if you want to say eh, caldo de, de pollo is chicken broth. Like this. Caldo, that will be broth. Different than the soup, right? That has more in ingredients. Sabemos que la sopa lleva más ingredientes, pero si solo es el caldo, then it's broth. It's like no, this. fíjese que es lo mismo. Es lo you mismo, use it the same? Pero el nombre. Le llaman. Le ah, entonces ellos le, le, le cambian. Ellos le llaman caldo. Mm, un caldito. Ok, deme un caldito. Mm -hmm. Because here for us is different, right? Para nosotros el caldito es, es como, uy, la esencia. Caldito, right? correcto, correcto. And the essence, es la esencia, right? Is the essence. As different countries, right? They call it different. En algunos pues, países le llaman de diferente manera a la comida, a las cosas. So they change. They have chicken broth or chicken soup or hen soup, beef soup, bean soup. Teacher. Tortilla soup. <laughs> yes, tell me. So Perdón la interrupción. Este, Kenia Vanessa indica que tuvo una emergencia y va a salir de casa. Va a andar como oyente. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Yes, I have here. 
about Kenya. Yes, only Kenya. Kenya Vanessa. Thank you. And Rafael has problems. Okay, let me write this. Yo me disculpo del día de ayer, miss. Yes, yes. no energy, right? Ya te lo regresó la energía. Como a ¿verdad? las 11 vino. My God. Sí, entonces era o quedarme en lo oscuro o entrar a la clase y, y soy medio fóbica a la, a la oscuridad. Entonces... Fóbico, to, to the dark. Uh -huh. Así que las disculpas, pero ya vi el video. Okay. Ya vi But you no watch the class, right? uh, Yes, you remember, he said, no, no. Igual nos hizo falta. Said, Gracias. Yes. Y les agradezco mucho. That we miss you all. Con uno que falte, ya, yeah. right? Hace falta, right? The Jane participation. Wow, the participation. <laughs> you were listening, yeah? Blanca was listening too, yeah? That's yeah. good. That's ya no se ande quedando sin lunes, Vi. <laughs> Con, consígase una rayo vaca ahí. Sí. Of the car, the battery of the car. <laughs> right? The car battery, you can check. Sí, es cierto. Yes. Eso debía ser. <laughs> yes. All right. You have more questions about this? So we can call different, right? In different countries. Depende del país, así le llamamos de, adoptamos de diferente manera, ¿no? El, nuestro vocabulario. They have different manners. Let's check here then. Now, let's see about the adverbs of frequency when we're referring about food. We have a short conversation here. It says, let's have pizza. This have pizza, that means let's eat pizza. Comamos pizza, right? Let's have pizza. Popcorn, chocolates, and candies. Oh, I never eat pizza and popcorn together. And I hardly ever eat chocolates or candy. Let's have pizza, hot dogs, grapes, and watermelon. Well, I like grapes, but I don't like watermelon. Let's have, and here you can include, right, to complete. Let's have hot dogs. Let's have ice cream. Let's have peanuts. Let's have a pineapple, or let's have potato chips. That's just like an, a short example. In the video, remember that you saw the conversation. So let's practice our conversation here. We have the case, and the name is fish for breakfast. We have Sarah and Kubiko. <laughs> Let's have breakfast together on Sunday. Okay, come to my house. My family always has a Japanese-style breakfast on Sundays. Really? What do you have? What do you have is like, what do you eat? We usually have fish, rice, and soup. Fish for breakfast? That's interesting. Sometimes we have a salad too. And we always have green tea. Well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like to try new things. Now, right? That's interesting. Can you imagine that fish for breakfast? It looks like lunch for us, right? Because in El Salvador, we never eat that for breakfast. Probably for lunch or, or maybe sometimes for dinner, right? All it depends. Do you have new vocabulary from the conversation? No, teacher. No? Long, mm -hmm. Logeter. Logeter. Oh, together. Together. Look at. ¿Cómo? Together. Es, together. Ajá, se ve un poco ah, es T, ¿verdad? Es una T. Ajá, Perdón, right. pensé que era L. T. It's a letter T. Together means juntos. Let's have breakfast together on Sunday. So it, it's asking for company, company to eat the breakfast. Now let's practice it. We are going to start it. <coughs> let's start. Nevi, you are Sarah. Let's let's have breakfast. Look at it. Together. Together. Together, together on Sunday. Thank you. Blanca, continue. Okay. Okay, okay, come to my house. My family always. Always? Always. Always has a house. Japanese? Japanese in a style. A style? A style. Breakfast on Sunday. 
on Sundays. Thank you, Aaron. Continue. <laughs> really? Really? What do you have? Thank you, Kevin. We usually have fish, rice, and soup. 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 Very good. Yes. Soup. Let's check something here. When you say soup, is the liquid, the food. But we have another case that is similar, is this one. Sop. Sop is when you take a shower. How long? The bar, exactly. But the ah. pronunciation is very similar. Ah, que la había escuchado, pero no sabía que era, pensé que era sopa. <laughs> it's very similar. The writing and the pronunciation. But sop is the one that you take a shower. So the pronunciation is like this. Sop. Hay yeah. una tienda que se dedica a hacer jabones, ah, es Hello yes. Soap. Hello, Hello Soap. Hello Soap, exactly. It's very oh. popular. And those soaps smell very good. They smell, oh. they are very popular. And mm -hmm. the food, the pronunciation is soup. That's the pronunciation. Okay. Soup. You take soup. a shower, soap. You drink or food, soup. 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 That's the difference in there. Okay. Right. Let's go ahead. Let's continue. So we have and sub, right? Let's continue. Melba, Patricia, please. Fish for breakfast. Fish for breakfast. That's interesting. Interesting. That's interesting. 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 Very good. Interesting. Thank you. Judith, continue, Sometimes please. We have a side too. Mm -hmm. And we I'll, I'll always have. And we always? The audio, the audio, mm -hmm. Judy, do you have difficulties with the audio? We yeah. cannot listen. Hola? Yes, now. Now we hear you. Judy? Hola, 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 hola. Okay, now hola? yes, hello. we can hear you. Hello, hello. Okay. <laughs> sometimes. Seria, sometimes we have a salad too. Mm -hmm. And we always have green tea. Thank you. Rebecca, Vanessa, continue, please. Well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like it. Try but, new but things. But I like, but I like. But I like to try new things. New things, very good. Yeah, that's true, you see? It's saying here, okay, never eat breakfast right, uh, as a fish. But the person does not refuse, maybe like to try new things. Now let's check. We are going to investigate then to ask, what do you have for breakfast? For example, I can say, I always have fried plantains, beans, and cream. Fried plantains are this, right? Fried plantains, platano frito. Those are flights, right? Fried plantains. We have the beans, the delicious beans, and we have the cream. That's like a typical breakfast. Now let's check. Tell me, what do you have for breakfast? What do you have for breakfast? Sandra Guadalupe? Sandra? Mm. Yes? yes? What do you have for breakfast? Describe your breakfast. Um, I always have. Good. Um, how do you say pan francés con plátano frito? French, French bread is delicious, right? Yeah, French bread with fried plantains. French bread. 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 French French bread. 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 With with fried uh, with fried plant plantings. 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 Okay. Plantings. That's good. Thank you, Sandra. Good. Let's continue. Fernando, what do you have for breakfast? 
I always have mm -hmm. eggs, coffee, okay. yeah, and fried plantains. And fried plantings. Fried, fried plantings. plantings. Very good job. Nice one. Thanks. Rafael, continue. What do you have for breakfast? Um, I usually have um, eggs fries. Cream fried, and fried eggs? French. You mean fried eggs? Fried eggs. Huevos fritos? Yes. Yes, fried eggs. Yes? Yes. Okay. Can you repeat it, um, please? I usually have... Um, cream. Uh -huh. And coffee. And coffee. Okay, so it's good complement of the breakfast then. Now, if you observe, we have different... Albers of frequency. With this albers of frequency, we express like what is the manner that we repeat certain action. For example, here, if you say my family always, that means you repeat the action, right? Very frequently. Yeah. Another case. Aha, correct. Exactly. Usually, normally. Uh, in occasions, <coughs> that will be like sometimes. Sometimes, like here, en ocasiones, a veces, that's sometimes, or never, right? That means zero times. So the frequency is zero, never, never. Definitely, you don't do that action. So let's observe here, like, uh, what is the formula that we have? What is the structure? O sea, mis, uh -huh. que, vaya, en mi caso, eh, podría decir, uh, I always. I always. I always coffee. And I always. I always have. I always cough. Have coffee. coffee. Have coffee or drink coffee, you can say too. Drink coffee. All right. Usual, usualmente, como dijo? I usually. I usually sandwich. I usually eat or eat have. Sandwich. Uh -huh, that's good. You can say eat or have. I usually have a sandwich or I usually pues, have two sandwiches. Se puede como especificar si siempre y usualmente. Exactly. Uh -huh. Because depends on the repetition is that you need to apply the specific albero of frequency. So if you say, I always eat breakfast. I usually eat breakfast. I often eat breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast. Hardly ever. Hardly ever is the casi nunca. By hardly ever, rara veces also it can be, or never. So that's zero never times. Uh -huh. Never milk. Like milk. Milk, no. No, you don't. You don't like. La leche. Yeah, I mean, I don't like it either. I don't know, but I I don't like I don't it. Don't like it. Yeah, I don't like. But I like the dairy products, los derivados. I like the dairy base, for example, the cheese. I like it. A flan, also it has yogurt contains milk, but the flavor is different. El sabor, right? You know that is different. We have the case of sometimes that you can have different options, different positions. Like, sometimes I eat breakfast. Or you can also say, I sometimes eat breakfast. So the position here is like this. The structure is subject, adverb of frequency, the verb. So we have the action and you have the complement. I always eat breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast. We also have certain questions like, in a yes, no question. Do you ever have fish for breakfast? That ever means like alguna vez. Alguna vez eh, comes pescado para el, el desayuno. If, if you want to include the frequency words, it will be affirmative, short answer. Yes, I always do. Sí, siempre lo hago. So you include the auxiliary depending on the subject. As is I, you say do, right? Sometimes I do. Algunas veces lo hago. So sometimes I have fish for breakfast. This is to omit the repetition. It's not necessary to repeat, right? The complete form. Or negative, no, I never do. No, nunca lo hago. Or no, I never have fish for breakfast. So if we observe the frequency, it depends on the repetition. 
always 100%. Usually, we have often, sometimes, hardly ever, or never. It's like here. With the always 100, usually 80%. Often, often is like a, a menudo, con frecuencia, often. Sometimes, we have the case of sometimes, in some occasions, a veces, en ocasiones, hardly ever, that's another case, casi nunca, 25%. Or the last one that you have, never, 0%. So that you never do that action. Like never. Sure. 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 What do you never. say? Often? How do you say? How do you say often? That means a menudo o con frecuencia. Hardly ever that means casi nunca o raras veces. That's hardly ever. Casi? Casi nunca. Okay. Hardly ever. Thank you. You're very good. Now, we have a video about it to check more about the adverse of frequency. But first, we are going to pass the list, guys. Let me know if you are present. All right, we are ready here. Aaron? Present, miss. Thank you. Alba Marisol? Present. Thank you, Alba. Blanca Rosa? Present. Thank you so much. Elmer de Nilsson. Present. Thank you, Elmer. Evelyn Yesenia. Present. Thank you, Evelyn. Fernando de Jesus. Present. Thank you. Glenda Guadalupe. Glenda Guadalupe. No present. Juan Alberto. Juan, Juan Alberto. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you, Juan. Kenia Vanessa. Ah, yes, she's listening. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have Kenia, uh, Kevin Adrian. Hi, present. Thank you, Kevin. Maria Emilia. Maria Emilia. Melba. El chat puso presente, Miss. Emilia. Kenia. Oh, Kenia. Kenia Vanessa. Ah, ok, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Melba para. Sorry, va a estar como oyente, creo, dijo. Bella. Pero... Present teacher. María Emilia Thank también you. tenía problemas de luz, Miss. Mm, ok, she put maybe o in the group, en el right. grupo de WhatsApp. Ok, thank you. Then we have Melba. Melba Patricia. Yes, present teacher. Thank, thank you, Melba. Nevi, Solina. I'm here, Miss. Yes, you are there. Yes, thank you. Rafael. Rafael Antonio. Present, Miss. Thank you, Rafael. Rebecca Vanessa. Present, Miss. Thank you. Sandra Guadalupe. Present, Miss. Thank you, Sandra. Sandra Margarita. Present. Thank you so much. Jacqueline Marioris. Jacqueline Marioris and Judy Edith. Present, Miss. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead then. Okay, here we have. So let's go ahead with our video. This one is about the adverbs of frequency. Teacher. Tell me. Glenda Guadalupe is a present. We have Glenn. Ah, okay, thank you. Okay, let me check here. All right, let's check then our video. We're going to watch it and check. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn how to use adverbs of frequency when talking about food. Let's get started by analyzing the examples on the chart. Adverbs of frequency. I always eat breakfast. I usually eat breakfast. I often eat breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast. 
I hardly ever eat breakfast. I never eat breakfast. Sometimes I eat breakfast. Do you ever have fish for breakfast? Yes, I always do. Sometimes I do. No, I never do. Always. Usually. Often. Sometimes. Hardly ever. Never. Let me start by explaining what adverbs of frequency are and how we can categorize them. Adverbs of frequency are words that come before the verbs and they express frequency. For example, if you would like to express that you take a shower every day, 100% of the time, that will be always, you can use adverbs of frequency for that. For example, I always take a shower. This means I take a shower 100% of the time. If you would like to express that you never smoke cigarettes, uh, this means 0% of the time. You can use adverbs of frequency for that. For example, I never smoke cigarettes. This means 0% of the time. The easiest way to categorize adverbs of frequency is by giving each a percentage number. So <coughs> let's do just that. Always equals 100% usually equals 80%, often equals 70%, sometimes equals 50%, hardly ever equals 25%, never equals 0%. Next, I would like to explain how to use them and in which order to use them. Typically, we will use adverbs of frequency after the pronoun or the subject. We can follow this formula. Subject plus adverb of frequency plus the verb plus some kind of complement. Let's analyze a couple of examples. I always eat breakfast. The subject is I. The adverb of frequency is always. The verb is eat. And the complement is breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast. The subject is I. The adverb of frequency is sometimes. The verb is eat and the complement is breakfast. I would like to show an exception to this rule. If you notice the example, sometimes I eat breakfast. With the adverb of frequency sometimes, you may put that at the beginning, just like you see on the example. Sometimes I eat breakfast. You may also say, I sometimes eat breakfast, just like we've learned in this class by putting the adverb of frequency after the subject. And finally, you may say the following, I eat breakfast sometimes. You can put the adverb of frequency at the end of your sentence. The last point that I would like to touch in this class is how to form questions and answers about frequency. Let's start by understanding how to form questions. You may follow this formula, auxiliary do or does, plus the subject, plus ever, plus the verb, plus some kind of complement. Let's take a look at the example question now. 
Do you ever have fish for breakfast? The uh, auxiliary verb is do. After that, we have the subject you. Then we will add ever. Next, we will add the, a verb have. Finally, we need to add a complement fish for breakfast. And we can answer this type of question in different ways. For example, yes, I always do. Sometimes I do. No, I never do. Now is your time to practice by giving lots of examples of your own. I would like for you to think about food, particularly the type of food you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and express how often you eat this type of food. For example, I always drink coffee for breakfast. I, I never drink coffee for dinner. I hardly ever eat fish for lunch. I never eat fish for breakfast. After you finish this activity, please share your work in our discussion forums. All right, so you observe the position, right, of the frequency words or, or the adverb of frequency. They have like a specific form. Let's see some other examples. If we have the formula, right, that we were talking about, we have subjects plus the adverb of frequency plus the verb, and then you have the complement. But in this case, will be certain kind of food. In the case of sometimes, it has three possibilities of position. Sometimes I eat breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast or I eat breakfast sometimes. Now, let's check here. Let's make some practice. Sometimes I eat lunch. Let's give me like other examples. Let's continue. Sandra Guadalupe, give us another example, please. You sometimes. With the position okay. that you prefer. Okay. Este, yo tengo una aquí, pero no sé si está ah, correcta. Okay. Go ahead, say it. Uh, bye. I hardly, ¿cómo se dice? Casi nunca. Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Good. I hardly, hardly ever, ever eat. I hardly ever. No. Ever I eat. Hardly I hardly ever eat breakfast uh -huh. this Saturday. This Saturday. On Saturday. On Saturday. Or, on Saturday. On Saturday. On Saturday. On Saturday. Remember that this one is a frequency. Esta es como una frecuencia que uno normalmente repite. Casi nunca okay. eh, como el desayuno los sábados o en sábado. Uh -huh. So it's a frequency, right? It's a frequency that you have. Like this. Uh -huh. So that's okay. Uh -huh. That is the position that you have. You have the subject, you have the adverb of frequency, the verb, and the complement. That's all right. Good one. Nice. Thank you. Kevin, give us another example. And so... The frequency that you prefer can be often, usually, um, sometimes. I usually... Uh-huh. Eat breakfast... On... Espera, espera. Quiero ver. Ah, I usually eat breakfast. Y un complemento, ¿verdad? I usually eat breakfast. Yeah, you can give a compliment. In my training days. Ah, okay. In my training days. Yes. 
That's good. It's like a normal frequency, right? In a period of time. Es That's que habitualmente correct. cuando o sea, solo tengo entrenamiento, pues mm -hmm. un licuado o algo así para oh, no like a milkshake. Mm -hmm. Ah, very good. That is nice. Thank you. Judith, continue. I often mm -hmm. I often eat mm, sushi. No sé sushi. Si era. sushi. 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 Uh -huh. sí, sushi. Mm -hmm. oh. With my husband. With my husband. Husband. With my husband. Very good job. That's nice. Okay. You have this kind of frequency. Notice, remember that after the subject, we have the frequency word. Exception by sometimes that you can use three different positions. The three forms are correct. Now, we also have another type of question. This one is a yes, no question. And you investigate the frequency here. For example, if I ask, do you ever eat the snacks for dinner? Yes, I usually do. ¿Alguna vez comes bocadillos para la cena? Like snacks, right? Like this one. Yes, I usually do. So in a short answer, if you want to include the frequency word, it's like this. Si queremos incluir el adverbio de frecuencia, puede ser de esta manera. Y es una respuesta corta y finalizamos hasta el auxiliar. Yes, I usually do. Eso es para omitir repetición. So that is not necessary to say, yes, I usually eat the snacks for dinner. No necessary to repeat and repeat. You finish in the auxiliary. If you include another frequency word or adverb of frequency will be, sometimes I do, algunas veces lo hago, or sometimes I eat the snacks for dinner. Another form will be, yes, I sometimes do. Or definitely zero times, no, I never do. Let's ask another manner. What if I ask, uh, let's see, eh, Kenya Vanessa? Kenya, are you present? Kenya dijo que iba a estar oyendo. She's listening. Yes, yeah, she's listening. Thank you. Uh, what about Rebecca? Rebecca Vanessa. A question. Do you ever yes. eat grapes for breakfast? Do you ever eat grapes for breakfast? No, I never do. No, I never do. Okay, that will be a negative manner. All right. Nevi, do you ever eat crisps? Crisps will be like chips, right? Like potato chips. Do you ever eat crisps for dinner? Yes, I usually do. I usually do. Yes, usually I usually do. do. Very good. That's nice. Very good. Aaron, do you ever eat, um, let me see, hamburgers? For lunch? Yes, I usually do. Very good job. That's nice. Okay, Rafael. He has problems with connection, but you are there. Very good job. Yes, okay. Rafael, do you ever eat pizza for breakfast? Uh, no, I never do. I never do. Excellent. That's all right. Let's see. Let's continue. What about Juan Alberto? Juan Alberto. It's raining. Uh -huh. Yes, he has problems because of the rain. Okay. Now, Evelyn. Yes, please. Yes. All right. Evelyn, do you ever eat fish? For breakfast? No, I never do. I never do. Excellent. So this type of questions, right, is that you ask, is that affirmative or the uh, the negative manner? Uh, Blanca. Blanca, are you there? Hi. Yes, hello. Blanca, hello. do you, hello. Do you <laughs> ever eat sandwich for lunch? 
yes, I should usually do. Yes, I usually do. That's correct. Good one. Okay. Let's continue. Now let's see. Judy, you formulate a question to Kevin. Do you ever? Kevin, do you, uh, cualquier pregunta. Aha, correct. Do you ever eat? Do you... Puede ser eat or have, right? Okay. Do you ever eat mm, lasagna mm -hmm. and the breakfast? For breakfast? For breakfast. Mm -hmm, good. Um, no, I never do. Very good job. Nice. Kenia Vanessa, you formulate the question to Sandra Guadalupe. Kenia no puede. Kenia, oh yes, I, I forget. <laughs> yes, don't remember. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Juan Alberto, he has problems with the audio. Okay. So, eh, Sandra Guadalupe, you formulate to Nevi. Okay, miss. Okay. Uh, do you ever eat chicken soup? Soup. 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 Si, soup. doy jabón de, jabón de pollo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perdón. Do you ever eat chicken soup uh, for uh -huh. breakfast? Ah, that's good. No, I never do. I never do. Very good. All right. Aaron, you formulate the questions to Rebecca Vanessa. Rebecca, do you ever pizza? Do you ever eat? Do you ever eat pizza for breakfast? Mm -hmm, okay. No, I never do. I never do. Very good. Rafael, now you formulate the questions to Evelyn. Okay. Evelyn. Do you ever have um, pineapple for your breakfast? Pineapple. Pineapple. Is it pineapple? Okay. For breakfast. No, no I never do. I no, don't I... like pineapple. You don't like pineapple? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Very good. Nice. Okay. So this one will be with the yes, no questions. Do you have any question with this? With the frequency, adverbs? A question, Miss. No questions? Okay, remember yes. that in the platform? Una pregunta. I'm sorry, I heard you said no question. No, <laughs> hay no question. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Porque en algunos, yes. en algunas preguntas está el take, 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 oh, take. Y en otras está el have. Ah, because these ones are synonyms. It's like this. Um, uh, take it. Let me. Puede utilizarse los dos. O yes. No, hay, hay, oh. no es dependiendo la la sintonía. No, es un sinónimo. No, you can say take, have, or also eat. Ah, okay. The three of them, like. Um, los tres son correctos. The three of them are correct, but the most common one is have. El más común es have. I have. Like I usually have snacks. For dinner, for example, I never have grapes for breakfast. I never eat. I never take. So the three, el menos común acá es take. El más común es have. Have es más como generalizado. Tomas, ¿verdad? Eat. Tomas. Ajá, correct. ¿O ¿Qué tienes para, para comer, right? It's like eat, they are synonyms. We don't translate literally, no se traduce como literalmente, sino que como las tres son eh, comer. ¿Qué comes? My pleasure. Any sure. other question? Tell me. En el caso de, de cuando usamos para varias personas, si le preguntamos a un grupo de personas, eh, siempre va, se va a mantener la misma, la misma estructura de la pregunta. In do you ever? En el ajá, All... sería, ser, ya no sería do, sino que sería eh, does, does, does they? No, do they. Do they. Do they, because remember that, that do, 
Ajá, y, correct. Y, Ajá, exactly. You are going to use group or are you with they? Seguimos la misma regla de la Siempre auxiliar. la misma regla que hemos mantenido. Ah, exactly. Sí, if, it's, okay. persona, uh -huh. if it's one person, is does. Like he, she, it. For example, if you say, she, it, does, does your best friends, friends ever have a oh, okay. pizza for lunch? Se sigue la misma regla. Y aquí, se, y aquí se va a mantener también este, eh, la, la pregunta, la estructura afirmativa o negativa. Mm -hmm, that's good. So ah. if you ask, does your best friend ever have pizza for lunch? Yes. What else? If it's affirmative, the answer? I usually do. Not I, you? No. Because it's the yes. person. He or she? She. she so, uh -huh. Suppose that is she. Suppose that is she. 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 And what she frequency? usually do. Look, remember that the auxiliary is different. Usually, usually does. does. Excellent. Does. That's correct. Does. Always the form of the auxiliary is depending on the subject. We you got a race. It's always depending on the subject that mm -hmm. you have. Here you have do because the subject is I. Here you have do because the subject is you. But if the subject is third person, then you need to modify like this. Okay. Does your uncle ever eat apple for dinner? That is has like a third person form, right? But it's singular. It's talking about your uncle. What about if it's negative? If it's negative answer? No. No, he. No. No. Aha. Uh -huh. No, he. He doesn't. he doesn't. And the frequency word? No, he... No, he... As it's negative? Never. It? Never. Doesn't. Never. Does. Doesn't. In this case, doesn't. you only need does. En este caso, oh. solo va a necesitar does. ¿Por qué? Porque never es negación. Never es una negación. Okay. Ajá, okay. entonces ya no, ya no va a utilizar como never doesn't. Es innecesario, porque es como repetir negativa. Es que negativa. Le preguntaba por qué ya había visto una, una estructura de esa pregunta, pero eh, me quedó la duda. Me quedó uh -huh. la duda de la negación. Ajá. Entonces, yo creo que quizás por ahí andaba, porque no miraba, no miraba la, la forma tradicional de negación, sino que es eso. He never does. Entonces, does. Y ahí, y ahí exactly. automáticamente exactly. estamos negando eso. La respuesta. Correct. Correct, porque aquí mi auxiliar es como si fuera afirmativo, pero porque aquí ya lo tengo en negativo. Es decir, la traducción okay. sería como, no, eh, nunca lo hace. No sería como, no, él nunca no lo hace. Ajá. Si no, ya cambia, ¿verdad? Right? The context is different. No, he never does. Okay. Yes, yes he always y, does. Yes. Y así como dice Aaron, en ese caso, he never does, uh -huh. ¿es necesario colocarle el no anticipadamente o solamente he never does? What happened is that here you put emphasis. Uh -huh. Aquí con el no ponemos una emphasis siempre cuando hay una no. respuesta uh -huh. negativa. No, he never does. O no, uh -huh. I never do. It's the same case as like here. Right? No, nunca lo hago. Aquí sería no como se más decir, simple. Se puede. Nunca lo hago. Ah, se puede. Se puede, se puede utilizar. Solo Pero que gramaticalmente más... no, no se escucharía bien. Tan formal. Uh -huh. Porque es como, es, es, la respuesta es más simple. Uh -huh. Es como para utilizar en afirmación, que siempre utilizamos el yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank Very you, welcome. Miss. Very welcome. Any other question? How do you say no. tengo una duda? I have a doubt. Like this. I have a doubt. A doubt. Tengo una okay. duda. I have a okay. question. I have a doubt. Miss, para eh, formular una respuesta con hardly ever, ¿sería mm -hmm. en negativo o en positivo? If you have that one, because you almost never do it like this. Eh, let's suppose that this one. Does your uncle ever eat apple for dinner? Then it will be, eh, in the, this case, it will be, yes, he hardly ever, ever 
das. Sería afirmativo porque aunque muy pocas veces o raras veces lo haga, siempre lo, lo hace, o sea, aunque no sea con mucha frecuencia, pero aunque sea alguna vez, se realiza. No tiene una frecuencia de cero veces. Casi nunca, pero se hace. Se realiza. Dicho que puede mover más de alguna podemos... vez. Ok, thank you. Ajá, correcto. So podemos no podemos mover la respuesta para que se vea. This one? ¿Es ok? Es que daba, se había mezclado las respuestas ahí con Ajá, la Ajá, I'm going to erase this. Voy a borrar esta. <laughs> sí, esa. Yes, ajá, con like eso. This. Thank you. You're welcome. Like this. Ok. Me quedé yes. la duda, Miss. Mm -hmm. ¿Por qué en ese casi nunca se afirma? Porque yes, her, her, hardly her, ever does. Her. Porque si lo hace, si realiza mm -hmm. la acción. Aunque Pero también si estamos podría diciendo, ser. Si estamos diciendo casi nunca, sí, casi nunca. O sea, como que hay una contracción, una contradicción. Contradicción, ajá. Uh -huh. Por eso acá puede ser opcional utilizar el yes o simplemente puede ser no. he hardly ever does. Ah, oh, muy bien. Puede ser cualquiera de las dos. Aunque no se escuche muy lógica, pero según la, la gramática debe de ir así, porque se realiza, aunque rara vez se lo haga, pero se hace, se realiza la acción. So you can o, sea que, o, sea que el yes, o sea que el yes y el no prácticamente son como, como un apoyo a la respuesta que vamos a dar. Exactly. You do it, oh, yes, I do it. Sí, lo mm -hmm. hago, aunque muy pocas veces o raras veces lo hago, pero lo hago. So no es definitivamente never. So if you say never, okay, definitely is only no. No, I never. Usted, teacher, o sea que eh, yes. donde usted dijo que se puede poner he hardly ever does, no necesariamente lleva el no al, al principio, por el does. Ajá, because you have here hardly ever. Does. Difícilmente lo hace o casi nunca oh, okay. lo hace. Mm -hmm. Si no fuera como no, casi nunca no lo hace. Mm -hmm. right? okay. So it needs to be like, like connected there. Mm -hmm. Any other question? No. Remember, you have the exercise, right? 4.9 in the platform. In this one, you need to put them in order. I never have breakfast on weekends. What about this one? The first, the first exercise that you have. How will it be? I have work, I, snacks, eat, at, and hardly ever. What is the correct I, structure? I hardly ever. Aha, uh -huh, I hardly ever. Eat. Eat, eat. the action, uh -huh, no. the verb. Eat. Snacks. Snacks. Excellent. At, yes. at, work. At, work. at work. At work. That's correct. Yes. That will be the position, right? As we have the subject, then we mm -hmm. have the adverb of frequency. In this case, it's mm -hmm. hardly ever, the verb, and my complement. Mm -hmm. Easy, right? Not complicated yes. here. You just need to mm -hmm. memorize the structure. <laughs> the structure you need to memorize there. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, guys. We continue tomorrow practicing with this. Okay. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Attention for your participation. Have a beautiful Good night. night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Take Good care. Good night, Sweet people. Dreams. Good night, teacher. Good night, Good night guys. Good night. Thank you. See Good you night. tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Take care. Goodbye. Sweet dreams, everybody. Goodbye, Nevi. <laughs> ya me cortó la Nevi. <laughs> good night, teacher. Well, have a good night. Take care.